Hi, I'm Niels, and welcome to this introduction on how to use .NET user controls with Umbrago. In this episode, we'll look at the basics of using user controls together with Umbrago. For this, we'll start with adding a very simple Hello World user control. From there, we'll add some input controls so we can see that we can use state and input controls, including postbacks, just like we're used to. Once that's set, we'll finish off by trying to add culture-specific items like a calendar control and resource files to see that the multilingual capabilities of Umbraco can be used together with .NET user controls. That's actually pretty cool. Whenever you set uh, language settings on a node in Umbraco, those, that information is passed to your .NET user control automatically. So let's get started. Okay. To create a user control, you should use Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 or 2008. In this case, I got 2008. So in order to create a user control that you can distribute as an assembly or in an assembly, will create a web application project. So I'm just going to call this one Hello World. So when you create a web application project, you get a whole uh, bunch of stuff like uh, the app data database, uh, default ASPX files and web config. And we actually don't need these items. So I'll just delete those. And instead, I'm just going to add a new item, which is a uh, user control. And this one is just going to be called Hello World as well. So this is going to be really advanced. I'm just going to type Hello World. Now let's just go to design mode so we can see how beautiful it is. Rocket science. So let me just build the solution. And now I got a Hello World user control. To use that with Umbraco, I will need to copy the ASCX file um, to my Umbraco installation and the Hello World assembly. In this case, there's really no logic uh, in this user control, so copying the ASCX file should be sufficient. But to sort of state best practice, I'm going to copy both. So I'll go to my uh, project folder, find the hello world project, and I got my ESCX there. And I'm going to copy that one into my website in the folder called user controls. like that. And then I'm going to copy the assembly as well. And that's going to be copied into the bin folder of my website. So when I say website, I mean your Umbrago uh, installation directory. In my case, it's uh, the VVV root. So all that I'm missing in order to be able to add this to my website is to wrap it inside something called an Umbraco macro. To get an introduction on an Umbraco uh, macro, you should go to uh, one of the previous videos in the uh, for designers um, videos. There's an, a, a really good introduction on how to use uh, macros. I'm just going to log into my website. And as you can see, my website here is just a completely ordinary Umbrago Boost installation. And I'm going to go to the developer section inside Umbrago. Now I need to create a macro, so I'm going to right click macros and select create. I'm just going to call this one Hello World. So now we got a new macro called Hello World, and I'm going to click it to edit it. As I want to use a .NET user control, I'm simply going to select my user control that I copy 
Notice the user control slash hello world here CX. I'm just going to select that one and click save. That's it. Now I'm ready to insert my user control into a template. So let's say I want to insert it into my uh, homepage template. So I'm going to go to the settings section. I'm going to open up the homepage template. And I want to insert it before the uh, body text. I'm just going to click the insert macro icon. And I'm going to select the hello world macro. Just like that. And I'm going to click save. If everything went, uh, went well, we should be able to see the hello world uh, on, uh, before the, uh, the body text. So let's just take a look refresh our home page and as you can see we got the hello world text it's not really that exciting but at least we can be assured that our user control actually works now to make this a bit more interesting let's add a couple of controls and a bit of logic to our user control so i'm just going to remove this and I'm gonna say type your name and add a text box. Like that, and I'm gonna add a button as well. And down here we're gonna I'm gonna add a literal control and whenever you click this button I'm gonna update the little literal control you typed and then the contents of the text box so again nothing fancy but if this is gonna work we can uh, be assured that we can use input controls and that we have uh, a support for state like uh, post back events and stuff like that. So in fact, we could also in the page load event, we could add something like if it's not a post back, we'll just add a bit of text. Uh, as a default value for our literal. So let's build this one again. And once again, copy the files. So the hello world is going to the bin folder and our user control is gonna be copied as well. Just like that. Now we don't need to re-register our macro as the only thing we've changed is inside the uh, .NET user control. So this should actually just work out of the box. So let's refresh our website. And as you can see, we got our new fancy control here with the default text because we don't have a post back. And my name is Niels. I'm just gonna click the button and post back works as well. So we can conclude that you can use uh, .NET user controls in the exact same way as you can use them in a traditional web form. And we got support for state and we got support for um, input controls. Basically, you can do more or less uh, uh, anything with the .NET user control together with Umbrago uh, that you can use um, together with um, a traditional web form. The only thing that's not supported is cache directives on your user control, but I'll get back to caching in, an a in another episode um, because of course we've thought about that with Umbraco and we made it really simple to do caching. So the only other thing I wanna show you in this screencast is how to do resource um, or culture uh, sensitive things like dates 
and resource files. So let's check that out. Okay, let's look at um, culture specific uh, uh, things that you will need to use whenever you do multilingual sites. Starting by going back to my Visual Studio, as you can see, I've added a app global resources uh, directory, and I've added two resource files, both of them called Hello World, and one of them appended with the Spanish um, culture code. So in this case, I've added a uh, key that's called default text, and in English, which is the default, I've added type your name, name above. In the Spanish one, I've used uh, Google to translate the text, so it's now Escriba su nombre arriba. And if that's not correct, uh, blame it on Google, please. I'm not really good at Spanish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my hot-coded string here to use resource files instead. So let's just uh, look at resources hello world default text and I'm gonna save that one compile it and then I'll need to copy the uh, assembly as well as the app global resources directory so let's do that first I'm gonna copy this one and then I'll need to go back and copy the app global resources directory like this. So if we go back to our wonderful uh, uh, user control and refresh this page, it should look exactly the same, like that. So what's so cool about um, resource files then? Well, apart from our um, text is no longer hard-coded, we got the benefit that we can reuse the same control uh, and then use resource files to get the text translated, just like we're used to with web forms. So let me go to the settings section of Umbraco and add a new language. If you're completely new to multilingual in Umbraco, you should go ahead and watch the excellent uh, chapter in the For Designers um, section, where there's a, a whole set of videos on how to do multilingual sites with Umbraco. But for now, I'm just going to create a new language. And in this drop down, I got all the cultures available in .NET. So I'm just going to find the Spanish and with the Spain dialect, like that, and create that one. Now I can change the culture settings on a node in Umbraco. So um, let me just go ahead and do that for this one. It's done by managing the host names where I can set domain name and associate it to a language. So now I'm going to say that this part of my site is going to run in Spanish uh, with Spanish culture settings. Okay, I'm going to close the window and let's try to refresh this page. As you can see, we're using uh, the resource files now and you can see that. Uh, resource files in user controls work the exact same way as you're used to and you can basically take your legacy user controls with resource files and use them within Braco. Just for fun, let's just go add a calendar control as well. So just type pick a date and drop the calendar control. There we go. So I'm just going to save this one. And then let's just copy the ACX. Refresh this page. And as you can see, also dates are now formatting using Spanish language settings. So this marks the end of this screencast. As you probably uh, remember, we've been through making a Hello World user control. We added input controls 
and saw that we could use state and post bag events just like we're used to. And finally, we used resource files and, and calendar controls to see that we can work with cultures uh, in .NET user controls just like we're used to. So thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.